Let's set up Plex on my newly purchased Synology NAS. This video will focus on configuring Plex to connect to my HD Home Run, which is a network-based TV tuner that I showed off in a previous video that will be linked in the description below. Plex is available in the Synology App Store known as Package Center. I'm actually going to bypass that and install a binary for the Plex media server that I downloaded from the Plex website. You don't need to do this, but often the version of Plex on the website is newer than what's in the Synology Package Center. If you go the same route as me, just note that you won't get automatic updates and that you'll have to manually update the Plex media server. Once the install is complete, it pops up a message that's really important that we need to take note of for later. It's basically telling us that once we set up our media folders, we need to grant the Plex media server permission to access these folders. Okay, let's launch the Plex media server. It's going to ask for your Plex account credentials. If you don't have a Plex account already, you'll need to create one. This is a cloud-based authentication process, but just know that you can also set up local accounts that don't require an internet connection. Now you can name your Plex server. It gives you the option to set up your libraries, but I haven't created the folders for that yet. We'll do that in a minute. Something I wanted to call out is that Plex gates two important features behind their paid subscription called Plex Pass. First, if you want to leverage hardware transcoding capabilities of your device that the server is running on, this requires Plex Pass. Second, if you're planning to connect a device like an HD Home Run, the channel guide data is only available if you have Plex Pass. Generally, I'm not a fan of adding more monthly subscriptions if I don't have to, so I opted to get the Plex Lifetime Pass, which tends to go on sale periodically throughout the year. Okay, on with the setup. If I click on Live TV on the left, this just shows me Plex's collection of streaming channels. To actually set up my Live over the Air TV, I need to click on the wrench icon in the upper right. Then under the Manage section, there's an option for Live TV and DVR. The setup flow here automatically detects my HD Home Run device, which is what puts my Live TV content on my network. You need to accurately fill out your country and postal code information here so that Plex can download the channel guide for all the OTA channels that you're going to be watching. Then you get to see all the channels that will be imported. If you want, you can run a rescan of all the channels. This is basically sending a signal to the HD Home Run device and telling it to do a rescan. If you haven't seen my previous video on setting up the HD Home Run, I'll link it in the description below. Okay, so we have all our channels here. The disabled ones are ones that I've already marked as disabled on the HD Home Run configuration because I know those channels don't come in well. Now I can complete the setup and jump to the channel guide. It took a few minutes for the guide data to download and populate the UI. I edited that part out to spare you the boredom. So now I have my guide with all the channels, and I can click on one to watch it directly in my browser. Plex has some cool features like being able to see all the things that are on, but in an album art style view. Clicking on items that aren't live show a record button, but red error text is present indicating that I haven't set up my libraries yet. So let's do that. I went through the flow off camera so I could figure it out before showing you guys, so let's add a second media folder and walk through it. From Synology's File Station app, you can click on the Create button and click the Create Shared Folder option. Since I have a media folder there already, I'll name this one Media2. This Recycle Bin option creates a folder where all deleted items are dumped to. This gives you a chance to restore anything that may have been deleted by accident. I don't know if I'll use this feature long term, but I'm trying it out for now. You have the option of enabling encryption for the media folder, but I'm skipping that because nothing sensitive will be stored here. I'm going to skip the advanced settings too. Now we can confirm our settings and click next. So now I have my media 2 shared folder. Now I'm going to create some subfolders, one for movies and another for TV shows. If we right click on the Media 2 folder and select Properties and click on the Permissions tab, we can grant the Plex Media Server access to this folder. I'm choosing Read and Write. Note that Write Access is needed for the DVR functionality in Plex when you record a live TV show. And now I'll just hit Save. Jumping back over to the Plex Media Server, we can click on the Settings wrench and navigate to Libraries. Now click Add Library and we will do TV shows first. I'll add a 2 to the name to keep it unique since I already have a TV shows folder. Then you have to point it to the correct folder on the file system. This will be under Volume 1, and I'll scroll down to my Media 2 folder. And finally select my TV Shows 2 folder. Now let's jump over to some live TV, and we can click on the Record button. 
Notice that because I have two libraries for TV shows, I can select which one I want the recording to be written to. I'll select the TV shows 2 that we just created. So now that that's set, that won't show up under my TV shows until the recording is complete. Let's check out Plex on my Roku Ultra and see what the experience is like since this is my primary streaming device. I gotta say I'm really loving this. The interface is done really well and it's miles better than the HD Home Run apps. If you hit the down button on the remote, it shows you recent channels, which makes it easy to bounce back and forth between them. My only complaint is that it's a bit slow to switch between channels, but I think that's probably just the nature of using the HD Home Run and needing to buffer the stream before you can play it reliably. Hitting the back button on the remote pulls up the guide. I favorited all the HD channels, so I can default my favorites list and be able to see only the content that I want. Tabbing over to the right lets you view all the channels. Hey, why don't we record The Tonight Show while we're at it? I'll put that in my original TV shows library. If I back out to the main Plex live TV screen, there are other options at the top. You can see the DVR schedule that now has my scheduled recording for The Tonight Show. It also has this What's On tab that shows you all the things that are currently on, but using an album art style UI. The Browse tab has a similar interface, but shows you everything that's in the guide, including upcoming shows and movies if you want to schedule a recording. So for example, maybe I want to check out Family Feud, and you can see all the upcoming episodes and record them. Okay, let's look at the DVR recordings that I made earlier. I recorded The Tonight Show under the TV Shows library. So when you first open the library, Plex gives you this recommended view, but then at the top you can just view the whole library. Now let's check out the recording. Hey, nice, looking good, Jimmy. Okay, let's jump over to the TV Shows 2 library. Sweet, there's my Inside Edition recording. Okay, I think that's about it. Plex and an HD home run is definitely a winning combo. I'm also really excited about the Synology NAS. I've barely scratched the surface of what this thing can do. If you found this video useful, please give it a like and consider subscribing. Alright, catch you in the next one.